Who doesn't love a good snack cake? And I might be making the ultimate one today. It's a yellow sheet cake with creamy chocolate frosting. I mean, what more can I say? For the cake, I'm looking for really tender crumb. It's plush inside and it's going to melt in our mouths. We'll get to the frosting a little later, but let's start with the cake. So any good baker will tell you that it's always better to weigh your ingredients than to measure by volume. That's really a good way to get precise ingredients. And I'm gonna to start today with bleached cake flour and I'm gonna weigh out nine ounces. So to create a plush crumb inside of our cake, we need to create something called a high ratio cake. And that's where we're using more sugar per weight than flour. We're gonna add 12 and a quarter ounces of sugar. Now sugar doesn't just add sweetness, it adds moisture and gives the cake the right texture. I need to add a little bit of leavening. Now for this, I will measure out instead of whey. This is baking powder. I'm going to use one teaspoon plus one quarter teaspoon quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and I need a half a teaspoon of table salt. So that's it for my dry ingredients. I'm just gonna give them a quick stir here, and I'll go ahead and fit this onto my stand mixer. So next up, buttermilk. It's going to add some beautiful tang. So I need a half a cup. We also need some eggs. We're using four large eggs plus two yolks. Crack these one at a time. All right, now for these last two, I'm going to separate the yolk from the white, and we're going to add the yolks into our cake. Now, one of the hallmarks of a yellow cake is vanilla, and this uses a tablespoon. We're going to whisk this just with a fork, mix it to break up those eggs. All right, that is going to be a rich and custardy cake. So this is looking pretty good. Now, let's start mixing. I'm gonna fit this with my paddle attachment and just give it a quick stir to make sure all of those dry ingredients are well mixed. That looks good. So now let's talk about the fat that we're going to add. We're using two types. I have vegetable oil and unsalted butter. We're using a stick of unsalted butter and a half a cup of the vegetable oil. Now, we're using the butter because butter just makes everything taste better, but we found if we used all butter, the cake could start to get a little bit dry and a little bit crumbly. Vegetable oil added in place of some of the butter is a great way to make sure that your cake doesn't start to stale too soon. So I'm gonna cut up the butter just into some small pieces. This is softened. Just break it up a little bit and add these right to my mixer. And I'll go ahead and add the half a cup of vegetable oil at this point as well. So I'm gonna turn this to low and we're just gonna mix this until the butter is incorporated. That's gonna take about 30 seconds. All right, that's looking a little bit like sugar cookie dough. Now I wanna aerate this just a little bit. So I'm going to increase the speed to medium and let it go for about a minute. That is looking good. Now I wanna point out that even if it doesn't say it in a recipe, if you see some things clinging to the side of your bowl at any time, it's always a good idea to give it a good scrape down. You wanna make sure that everything is mixing evenly. I'm going to turn this back to low speed and gradually add our egg and buttermilk mixture. That's looking great. So at this point, I wanna give the bowl another scrape. I'm also going to scrape the beater. At this point, everything's scraped down, looking good. I'm gonna increase the speed to medium high. And now we'll let this mix for about three minutes. We wanna get some air in there. Smells like a bake shop in here. Oh, look how puffy and fluffy that batter is. It's actually changed color. I'm going to put the batter in a 13 by nine inch cake pan, which I've greased and floured. Oh, doesn't that look good? It's almost a shame to bake it. The smell of vanilla, amazing. So I just wanna scoot this to the corners of the pan here and smooth the top a little bit. Just make sure it's in an even layer. And then what I can't get to with my spatula here, I'm gonna even it out even more. I'm gonna whack this pan on the countertop a few times just to make sure that any air bubbles that are underneath have a chance to come up to the surface and break. Otherwise, you might get a big gaping hole in your cake. Nobody wants that. And that smooths the top a bit. So about five wraps on the counter. If you see any big bubbles, you can just go ahead and poke them. So this is ready to bake. I'm gonna put this in a 350 degree oven and I'm gonna keep it in there until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out with just a few crumbs attached. And that's gonna take anywhere between 28 to 32 minutes. Oh, that's smelling good. 
let's take a look and see if our cake is baked all the way through. Now remember I said I need a toothpick to go right in the center and come out with a few crumbs attached. Now a high ratio cake does have a lot of sugar in it and therefore a lot of moisture. And if we'd used unbleached cake flour, we could expect this cake to be a lot more dense, actually start to collapse. But since we used bleached cake flour, we can get some good structure in there and a really fine crumb. Here's why. Flour is composed of gluten proteins and starch. To bleach flour, a bleaching agent such as chlorine dioxide gas is introduced, and it changes the chemical properties of flour and how it behaves. Although bleaching affects gluten, it primarily alters the starch in the flour, damaging the membrane that surrounds the starch granules. Our batter starts off by cutting fat into a mixture of flour and sugar. The first thing to note is that the modified starch binds to the fat in the batter more readily, dispersing it throughout the batter. That creates a tender texture and a finer crumb. When the liquid ingredients like buttermilk and eggs are added to the mixture and the sugar begins to dissolve, damaged starch granules in the flour can now absorb more water from those liquid ingredients. The bleached starch also behaves differently during baking. In the heat of the oven, the starch granules swell and burst. This is called gelatinization. This creates a sturdy gel structure throughout the cake that can hold all the sugar and the water in the recipe. With bleached flour, more of the starch can gelatinize, but with unbleached flour, not all of the starch can gelatinize. The resulting cake will bake up more dense with a less sturdy structure. Now the cake needs to cool completely before I can frost it. That's gonna take a good two hours. So I'm gonna leave it here. Of course, if you didn't wanna leave it on your stovetop, you can move it to a wire rack. Now that the cake is cooled, we can start on our frosting. It's the best part of the cake, right? We're making a chocolate buttercream, and it's an American-style buttercream with a little bit of a twist. So I've got some bar chocolate here. Let's see if I want a golden ticket. Nope, not a winner today. So this is a four-ounce bar. I need two ounces of that. Wonder what I'll do with the remaining amount. And I'm going to chop this fine because I need to melt it, and I'm going to use the microwave for that. It's just good to go at an angle, so you start at one of the points here. You can also use a bread knife for this, it works great. And I'm using 60% bittersweet chocolate, that means it has 60% cacao in there. So it's going to have some really good flavor. Alright, so this is going to go into the microwave. Alright, so I'm going to start the microwave for 45 seconds on high. And then after that, I'll go in there and stir it around. I'll check it every 15 seconds until everything looks melted. It's nicely melted, ooh, super smooth and creamy. Okay, so we're gonna weigh our ingredients. I need nine ounces of confectioner sugar. And in addition to the chocolate, we're also going to add a little bit of cocoa powder. This is gonna make it taste just so deep and rich and chocolatey. I need one and a half ounces of cocoa powder. A couple other ingredients, I have a little bit of salt here. Quarter teaspoon. I also have here eight tablespoons of softened butter. Obviously, we want softened butter so that our frosting is nice and creamy. Just gonna break it up into some blobs. Before I put this on the mixer, I've got one more ingredient to get. So we're using a little bit of hot water and that's going to make this buttercream so smooth and silky. Now, American buttercreams will sometimes feel a little bit gritty and that's because of those tiny sugar particles in the confectioner sugar. So a little bit of hot water, you don't have to use boiling water, just hot water is going to smooth everything. So I need a quarter cup of it, not a lot. So I'll just pour this right in and get it on my mixer. So I'm gonna start this on low speed and I'm just going to mix this for about 20 seconds until it starts to come together. All right, so everything's coming together, but I'm going to increase the speed now to medium and really start to work some air into that and get everything nice and smooth. So that's gonna take about a minute. And during that time, I'll probably have to go in there and scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl just to make sure that it's all mixing evenly. This looks absolutely gorgeous. Just gonna take a little blob there so you can see nice and smooth but we haven't even added the chocolate yet. So that's gonna go in now. Now that any lumps have been worked out from the butter, I'm gonna mix this on low speed just until it's incorporated. Shouldn't take too long. As promised. All right, so 
Now I want to show you this beautiful texture. Let me give it a nice stir here. I mean, that is gorgeous frosting. Now it's a little too runny at this point. We want to let this set up. So I'm going to leave it at room temperature right here on the counter, really well guarded. And I'll leave it here for about 30 up to 40 minutes. And the cocoa solids from the chocolate and of course the cocoa powder are going to help this set up a little bit. Now this frosting has thickened just a bit. You can see, oh, it looks so silky. So it's ready to be used. And of course the cake is completely cooled. We're gonna plop some blobs here across the cake. Now I'm going to use an offset spatula here just to start to push the frosting towards the edges. Oh my. And I wanna make sure that I'm getting everything evenly. So it's a good idea to turn the pan. This is just a, a first pass, making sure it's all evenly covered. Oh, it's like a beautiful wave of chocolate just hitting the cake. Now it needs to set up before we slice it. So I'm gonna go put this into the refrigerator for 20 minutes. Payoff time. I get to cut into the cake, serve myself a nice big piece. I've got my milk ready. It's always a good sign. All right, and I'm gonna get in here with my offset spatula. Gorgeous. Look at that crumb in there. It's so even, so plush and velvety. That is gorgeous. All right, so I'm gonna go in for the, the big point here. Lots of frosting on there. Fudgy and tender. I mean, the fork just cut right through there. Mm. It just melts in your mouth. It's so tender, it's plush. It's a really nice vanilla forward flavor coming in there. Of course, I can taste the butter and the frosting is so creamy and dreamy. It doesn't feel like that gritty American buttercream. It's kind of perfect. It's like the best parts of my childhood all wrapped up in one. And if you want to make this beautiful cake, use a high ratio of sugar to bleached cake flour and use a combination of butter and vegetable oil. For a super silky frosting, beat a little bit of hot water into the other ingredients. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, a childhood dream, the very best ever yellow sheet cake with chocolate frosting. It's disappearing quickly. Mm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.